Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 53 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about that the new Qantas airline system uses cloud computing to crunch data on thousands of possible flight paths using millions of data points, including the latest wind patterns, to build a cost map that presents the most efficient route. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back, and this is kind of a very timely topic. I'm uh, hearing a lot of uh, airlines that are basically looking to shave some um, some more off their, uh, their costs so they can get to uh, better margins, which are razor thin right now. Yeah, exactly right. So, look, other airlines, are they a bit slow to follow the cloud? And, and do you think the, the, the Qantas success will change all of that for how they're going to pick up to speed on cloud, cloud technologies? Yeah, I, I think it will. It's funny. It's like airlines are like any other business. They're waiting for the competitors to kind of act first and be successful, and then there'll be a fast follower and, you know, kind of chase the technology. Qantas has always been a, a very... Um, uh, you know, forward-looking, progressive airline, and 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 I, um, you know, worked with them in the past as a technology provider, and uh, you know, dealt with them as and dealt with their leadership, and they've always basically looking to all constantly improve what they're doing, and I think the other airlines probably need to follow suit. I think that there's been some mergers and acquisitions, there's been some near bankruptcies and some bankruptcies here in the states, and and they've been struggling over the last uh, you know 10, 20 years to try to figure out how to make money. The reality is that they're not necessarily at a place where they can't make money. They're just not as efficient as they can be. And so looking at this in terms of dealing with different routings and weather issues and, you know, traffic delays and be able to optimize the way in which you're leveraging airplanes and travel and getting people to where they're looking to go uh, in one piece, hopefully, and uh, in, a, in the cheapest possible way with the best possible customer experience is really what, where, where the game's going to be played you know, going forward. And I think that Qantas is going to lead the way. And so you can count on, you know, United and Delta and American Airlines and, you know, all the big ones here in the States, the majors, you know, start following suit, you know, based on the fact that a airline, in this case, the national airline that has simpler routes, but certainly longer routes, and certainly a higher cost basis is able to be much more efficient. Yeah, it's it's being able to shave off those few seconds here and there that save the money on the fuel, and uh, and certainly with being able to monitor the wind patterns and, and number crunch such vast amounts of figures uh, in in real time is is a real cost saver for the the industry. I think also as well, Qantas have just I think as uh, this year I believe it was Qantas did the first non-stop flight from Perth to London, um, which was you know uh, pretty phenomenal, and I know they're working now on doing a, an eastern coast, uh, Australia to London and New York non-stop. And I think that's all this power of, of cloud computing. So, you know, what airline have you got your eyes set on for, for the next move to cloud, Dave? Where do you see that going? I hope it's going to be United because I'm a, a million mile flyer in United and I fly those guys all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they're kind of, um, uh, they probably can, imp Im you know, improve themselves, uh, just like all the other airlines going forward, but it can be Delta or American, things like that. I don't watch the, the airline space, but I do look at the technology and what people are leveraging and what, what kind of makes me, fr and by the way, this is not just a airline problem. You know, this is also a governmental problem here in the United States. The, the FAA controls the airlines and flight routes and, where they can go, and as soon as the thing's up in the air, they have to check in with a controller, and the controller basically moves them along. And so there needs to be a synch uh, synchronization between the operational systems that the majors have and the, uh, the the systems that the government uses, which are you know traditionally archaic and really need to be updated, almost classically so. Um, they were they were kind of uh, ripped for it about ten years ago, and I think they've gotten a lot of their act together. But going forward, we need to have the ability for airlines to fly from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. And one of the issues is going to be you have to adhere to the government controls as they're controlling the skies. They, it's almost like roads in the sky that they push people down. And unless that kind of comes together where we have, even if we build the cloud-based systems to optimize the basic routes and optimize the airplane speed and optimize the weather very much like Qantas did, the government has to be on board to, in essence, uh, support um, aspects of the system, you know, so they can be efficient. 
So it's really kind of one of these problems, and it kind of brings up a good point, you know, that ultimately the government and the commercial sector have to come together on this stuff. And as we automate and make these things much more efficient, this kind of leveraging cloud computing, we have the opportunity to do that. I, I, I just um, need to see a fire in the belly from the United States government, you know, the European governments and some of the airlines to make it happen. I think it will happen. Uh, it's just going to take a longer time here in the States. Yeah, it's so frustrating when there, there's so much happening in the, the, the private sector that the public sector just doesn't pick up on it quick enough to you know benefit the, the user at the end of the day, which is the, the paying client of the, of the service. And it's uh, like you say, it's, it's multiple industries where that constraint always comes in. Uh, and more often than not, that, that constraint is it points to a, a massive, huge point of failure, doesn't it, um, for, for most industries where you've got that happening. Yeah, yeah, it is. And there's few industries where the government has to synchronize on stuff other than maybe healthcare and, you know, um, with the Medicare uh, insurance things and things like that. But in the United States and Europe, um, heavily regulated stuff is really going to not be efficient unless the regulations are really going to be synchronized with the aspects of the goals and objective of the company. And those should be the goals and objective of the flying public. Um, so that's what they would say. I think we've in a room of a panel of the big major airlines and lo looking at Qantas and look at some of the benefits that they've done in leveraging cloud computing and other technology. You know, they would basically would throw up the regulations. I would push it back on the major, uh, the major airlines and basically tell them now's the time to start automating and basically bettering how you're doing the systems and then pushing the government to make that happen. And obviously it's gonna be an incredibly difficult thing to do because you're dealing with politics when that happens. But you know, at the end of the day, we have to be able to put, you know, bring people from point A to point B in a safe, in a safe and optimized direction. And I think going forward, we'll probably have less people flying. Hopefully that's gonna be the case with myself because there's more you know, automation, very much like we're doing with Skype. You're in Australia, I'm in the United States, and we're still able to produce a show. Uh, and if that's the case, then they're going to be competing for fewer flying passengers. And if that's the case, they're going to have to be much better at doing their jobs or else there's going to be another set of consolidations. And so leveraging whatever technology to make them successful, you know, such as cloud computing, is going to be absolutely the way to go. They're looking to, in essence, disrupt an industry that probably is ripe for disruption. And I think that the airline industry is going to change a lot in the 10 years. And I think Qantas is going to lead the way. I think they're you know, probably the most progressive, innovative airlines of somebody of their size in the space to really kind of show people the other way. So my advice is if you're a major airline in the United States, get on an airplane, fly to Australia, talk to the folks at Qantas and see if they'll share some of their uh, their guidance with you. Certainly did, they did so in this article. Yeah, it was very interesting, actually. Uh, I mean, I read that the, the legacy systems they were using before um, to compute algorithms uh, would uh, in this particular example would take about four months to, to complete uh, a particular algorithm for flight paths etc uh, and using I think they're using AWS uh, to, to crunch their data they got it down to uh, I think it was about four hours um, which is ridiculous because it was enabling the algorithms to calculate I think up to 15,000 different routes which is just which is just incredible. So you've gone from months for you know on a legacy system doing that to four hours to number crunch fifteen thousand routes. I mean it's pretty phenomenal. You can put those figures to government. It just it makes so much joined up sense that for for the user benefit and for the businesses and the airlines etc. For everyone to benefit from making a, a huge change and making it making it happen, right? Yeah, and I think they could probably shave some more time off the processing of those algorithms and, and trips, trip analytics as, as uh, they become better at leveraging the technology. I think one of the things I'm finding out is that when we're dealing with analytics and dealing with algorithm development, things like that, and algorithm processing, we uh, gain about 1,000% efficiency in the first few months. And I suspect that Qantas is going to go through the similar kind of learning curve. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is that we got access to technology that it's almost free, you know, to start doing some amazing things that we may have been, you know, not able to afford or, you know, be able to have the talent to make happen. And I think Qantas is taking advantage of that. And I think the major company, the bigger companies out there that has learned dis disrupting their businesses or by disrupting their marketplaces before they get disrupted is um, a step in the right direction. And Qantas is kind of a, in, uh, one of those companies that went ahead and did it. You know, there, there may, may have been no reason for them to do it, you know, other than, um, you know, them becoming, 
you know, more self-sufficient. There was no fire in the belly reason. There wasn't, you know, revenue going away and, you know, weren't having, you weren't hemorrhaging cash and things like that. There was no panic reason to do it. They just decided they continually improve their airlines. And I think everybody else should really kind of leverage the technology to make it happen, become more innovative and creative in how you're leveraging technology. And you're going to gain benefits from it. Even if you fail 10 times, you're going to succeed 20 times. And that's going to be uh, the ability to succeed your way into a larger share of the market. I just see this as a big differentiator going forward for not only folks in the airline business, but every industry out there. Yeah, so very true. And look, it leads us on nicely to our top three tips. So if you'd like to share those this week on the Australia show, that'd be a great day. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Number one, do what Qantas did and have the courage to make the leap. And so in other words, it's a very difficult thing to do if you're doing okay to basically consider that you're going to take some risk and spend some money to improve the business that you have. And that's something that a lot of companies aren't willing to do. And I think that we've gotten to this um, retrenchment kind of mentality over the last 10 years because the economy was uh, not as uh, good as it should have been. And that, then it started to recover. And I saw the retrenchment kind of mentality kind of stay in the cultures within these companies. In reality, they should have some people who are you know, taking some risks and making some leaps, and they should be rewarded uh, for doing that. And so if you're not looking to leverage technology such as cloud computing to differentiate your business and take it to the next level, you're not, as, you're not doing the best you can for, the business, for, for your business that you're working for. Security has become something uh, that you may build as you go. And one of the things that um, I noticed when looking at what Qantas is doing and some of the other folks in this business, that security becomes something that has to be a dynamic and changing over time. And so how you deal with the you know, algorithms and making sure that you're not going to be hacked. Obviously, the, 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 the direct real-time position of a plane uh, is not necessarily something you want to broadcast out there. And all these sorts of things need to come up. But the thing is, they won't come up until we iterate through these problems. And so as we see these problems pop up, it's okay to solve them as we go. And so security may be something we build as you go, and I think that's perfectly fine. And then finally, don't be afraid, you know, if you're the, if you're the, uh, the only one in the lead. You know, in the major airlines that are out there, some of them are doing some very innovative things, and I learn about this stuff all the time. Um, but they're, I don't think they're quite as innovative as Qantas is right now. And the thing is, I think that it's almost a little disconcerting for companies that uh, are never in the lead that suddenly find themselves in the lead around utilization of technology, to be able to analyze their markets, be able to do something that nobody else did before. And I think the reality is you don't be afraid of that. That's something you have to embrace. Um, but I, I do see people panicking because suddenly they realize that they did well and they made something good and they make the best braking systems. You know, they make the best, uh, food processing systems. They make the best agricultural systems. And I think that's absolutely what we need to do. We need to have people out there leading the way and doing the best they can. So true. A great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks for those. And thanks for being part of the Australia show this week. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and I like your first tip. Make sure you take the first Qantas leap. Yes, that's right. Sorry, sorry. Old, old TV show, but we, we love it. We love it. Thanks again, Dave. Really appreciate your time. And thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Uh, look, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Lindicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, everything like that. So come and connect with us. All the links are in the description box below, along with all the latest blogs that we've got as well. So we've got some awesome blogs. You can get us on iTunes and Stitcher for podcasts. So check those out as well. And look, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos and channels with your friends and with your colleagues. We want to spread the world, bring uh, the cloud crew together as it were and uh, bring everyone together with the shows that we're doing which is awesome and we really thank for all the support on twitter and social media that we're getting already so thanks a lot for that as well and until next week take care be good <laughs>